when you went to go make the donation for your ticket, um, there was a disclaimer, like, if you see the cops, grab your stuff and run. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Brendan Bradley with the Fifth Wall Forum, committed to bringing together industry insiders from the theater and technology worlds to create opportunities for new kinds of virtual performance. And today I'm having a conversation with the delightful Haley Nichelle. She presented Team Sutherland's live augmented reality project Mayfly and will be sharing the journey and horizon of their continued work. But first, some quick housekeeping. Since our review in March, the Fifth Wall Forum has been behind the scenes, quietly overseeing pledges for all our teams, discussing our next event to bridge the storytelling and extended reality communities to be continued, and then launching this podcast series to keep the community connected, educated, and inspired. Today's conversation is brought to you by the 5WF Discord channel, a robust community of almost 300 technologists and artists sharing job postings, tutorials, upcoming performances, and the home of Artifact Friday, where our mentors and collaborators share artifacts from their work, giving Fifth Wall Forum members a first glimpse at the latest in innovation in immersive storytelling. Find out more at our website at fifthwallforum.com. That's 5 th W-A-L-L-F-O-R-U-M dot com. And now let's get to the conversation. Welcome, Haley. Thanks. Now, what brought you to the Fifth Wall Forum? <laughs> um, I heard the No Pro podcast. And on the No Pro podcast, I think I was listening to it on November 28th. And they were like, applications are due November 29th. <laughs> and I finished the podcast and I went to my computer and I applied and now here we are. Cool. What was your expectation? What did you think you were applying to? Honestly, I I was just like, ooh, an opportunity to meet people in this thing I'm obsessive about and I have no idea how to get into, even though, you know, through like Legion, the Legion piece with Justin, Chained with Justin, um, consulting on the key, the under presents as well as Tempest. So I was like, I've been doing this and I love this. I just don't know how to get into this other than finding random people who think of me for random auditions. So um, that, I don't know if that answers your questions, but I was just like, this is just an opportunity to meet the people that think the same way as I do. So tell me a little bit about your first introduction into these strange new technology mediums, modes. Yeah, my first introduction was the Future of Storytelling exhibit at the Museum of the Moving Image many years back. I used to live in Astoria, and the Museum of the Moving Image was in my neighborhood, and I kind of just like stumbled upon it and was forever changed. Um, But by that point in my career, I had already been doing um, Sleep No More, and then she fell. So I already understood from putting my very first VR headset on, we can make this absolutely wild. And what what was your first then taste of saying, I'm going to do it or I can do it? Um, I never really pursued it. I trusted that it would find me. Um, That's also because I didn't even know how to find somebody that really did this sort of thing coming from uh, like a very conservatory dance background where, you know, the most wild and technology based thing we did in that school was learn how to use the light board. Right. Um, right. Which is totally fine. And that's the direction of that school. And some of us go rogue and make a very hard left after we graduate and go down the rabbit hole of immersive theater and never turn back. Um So I trusted that it would find me and I obsessively talked about it and I, you know, like tried seeking it out to the point where when she was still with Future of Storytelling, I met Yelena Rajitsky and this was back when she was living in New York and I was like, I need to sit down and have dinner with you. I have so many questions. So also just like being slightly obnoxious and bold and hungry and wanting to seek out information. (laughs) And did people say yes to that? Did people take you up on those meals? Yeah, that was also back in like 2014, 2015. So future storytelling was still 
finding its feet and it was still discovering its potential. And then my first real piece with technology, theater, combo platter was with Justin Denton with the Legion HoloLens experience. And from that moment on, that, so that was like a very pivotal moment, A, to be working with Justin, who is remarkable. Like his brain is like no other I have ever witnessed work. He's amazing. Um, and then also working with the HoloLens, which in itself has its own little uh, bugs and hiccups at the time. This was back in 2017, but that was the first moment where theater and technology really married itself into one piece. And kind of from there, I've been working with theater and some form of technology, VR, AR, yeah. Very cool. Now, you said that that's when it was still kind of like finding its feet. Do you feel like we have reached a point that there are kind of like codified practices or like ubiquitous solutions? Or do you think we're still in that weird wild west? Uh, We are very much still finding our feet. I think um, theater that is happening in VR, we're starting. And by starting, I mean, we're like a little baby cell uh, starting to find like a, a common ground or what's working, what's not working. But I feel like there's nobody's quite ready to write like a textbook on like, this is how you do VR acting. Right. Cause we still are like, it's still kind of a, uh, a gamble a bit. And even in the under presents, you know, the actors often had just like a constant dialogue going, being like, I tried this. It was great. I tried that. Not so great. I think in VR, we're starting to find a commonality or like a, a, a foundation of how to approach things. And I say that from my own experience with the under presents and spending hours and hours and hours in the VR headset as an actor. When it comes to AR, we don't even have legs yet to grow feet on, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the under presents, a lot of you all actually developed out those characters. Did you bring to life a specific character or what was that process like under the hood? Sam was brave enough to hire a dancer. So we'll start there. Uh, the Under Presents was my first time really working with improvised acting. Um, so for the first couple of months of the Under, I did not speak. And I was all of the silent characters. Wow. Which is challenging in itself, but as a dancer, it is easier than using your voice. Right. And then as I gained more confidence um, reading body language in VR, which is a whole other, as you know, whole other skill set, um, then started bringing in a character that spoke. But it, I, I was silent. I primarily am all of the silent characters. That's so cool. So were you then kind of all teaching each other how to take on your parts of the under? Nobody understudied anybody. So everybody's characters that they developed were their own. And I think I can share this that, you know, like we, we shared like a group chat on an app and we also, some people had like Google docs that they shared. So we kind of knew what other characters were up to, um, which helped us say like, oh yes. And the other day I bumped into so-and-so and they're doing this amazing thing. And let's keep going with this storyline. So there was a little bit of kind of cross pollination when it comes to like storylines, but primarily what you were doing in the under was your own, your own work. That's so cool. That's very cool. When you get a run of something like that in virtual reality, which I think the under really does not have a rival yet in that category in the sense that it really did kind of live for a long time uh, with live performers, which is so cool. Mm -hmm. What for you, once you were kind of in it, the controls, you, you kind of had your workflow, when does it really work? And when is it still missing something for you as a performer? Um, I feel like at the beginning, it feels like it doesn't work, but it's also so new. You know what I mean? I, I mean, 
Can you speak to this as well? Like starting figuring out how to perform in VR, it is so foreign. It's just such a weird sensation. And, um, and then you're also like conditioning yourself to be in VR for more than 20 minutes without, you know, feeling like you're going to die. <laughs> like you might be sick. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> During our audition, I have to, I'll, I'll just give you this like little antidote, but even like during our first audition with tender claws, they were like, don't worry, we have a fridge full of ginger ale for you all. Um, <laughs> which was very funny. And half of the people that were auditioning were chugging ginger ale by the end of the, by the end of the audition. But you know, you, you start conditioning yourself and then you start learning just what works just out of practice. And also you start learning that it doesn't have to be precious. And I think that's the thing that when it, when there's like live immersive theater happening, it's, you can make something really important and really deep and really uh, in depth because, you know, you have that eye to eye connection and you're there at the same table holding hands with an audience member. And um, with the under presents that type of intensity doesn't always work. I, I personally noticed, um, cause in the, in the middle of something like that, you know, somebody's internet will drop or, uh, right. It might be one of those things where like their mom starts calling them for dinner, or it could be as simple as they think that they can talk and they don't know why you're not responding to what they just asked you. You know, it's, um, right. Right. So you kind of have to, with the under, we, and this is just the direction that piece needs. Like th there has to be like a very playful way of approaching it. And I really noticed that while being the silent characters is it's uh, you approach the audience the same way you see kids approach each other on a playground. Like they don't necessarily huh. talk, but one will start running and then the other will start chasing. And then they're like, okay, this is the game now. <laughs> and that, that kind right. of level of like very simple physical communication, not verbal communication and play is really like the sweet spot with the audience in that piece for the characters I played. What I hear or what I interpret is going really beyond the I'm an actor that goes in for the audition and really being seen as a collaborator and a co-creator of these universes, of these new initiatives. Totally, totally. So tell me about what was your process and your team's process in doing the Connector series to bring to life Mayfly, which I absolutely loved. Um, everything from the like the character itself to then the interaction with the made up window from the AR and then mm -hmm. your performance and showing that off in the reveal to me was just those are the really magical applications where we can kind of see yeah. all the moving parts and it still feels rooted in something we know and understand like yeah. oh she's performing and making that character so that it feels a little less crazy of like, wait, so there's a bug in a made up window that's talking to you and going through a journey. Like it was nice to kind of see the breadcrumbs that got us there. I think like a lot of the pieces, we started this in December when the U S was not doing so well. It was just like a very, very heavy moment in our lives, in our time, in our history. And so, you know, we, we had this idea, we knew off the bat that we really wanted to do something in AR. And I was pushing for that because I was like, I've done the under presents, I've done Tempest. I was there at, you know, like the very, very beginning of Chained, which was another VR acting hybrid. And so I was curious about just like exploring another medium altogether because like I said, I like fingers in every pot and I'm curious about it all. And this was like a prime opportunity where the stakes felt supported, but like very low. Like if the thing that you create is a total bust. You did it. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, like it was kind of like that where you're like, you tried. Maybe that technology will exist in a year, you know. Um, so we knew off the bat that we wanted to play 
kind of with AR. And then we weren't really sure what our story was, but we knew we wanted to do like something to do with legacy and like what you leave behind. And then in our brainstorming sessions, this idea of, I think it was Kevin um, Labesome who brought up, well, what happens if it's a fly and they live for 24 hours and then they die? Like, what about that story? And then we like kind of just got we kept coming back to this stupid little fly. (laughs) And from there, we're like, I think this is naturally where we're going and just kept following that path. And then we would get to the script and then we would bring it. And then Chris, the engineer would be like, that's not humanly possible when it comes (laughs) to technology quite yet. Um, And we also wanted to do something out of the phone because it's just a tiny bit more accessible than a VR headset. Right being a group and bouncing ideas and asking questions and going down some like very weird rabbit holes, we ended up with River the Mayfly. And that's often how the best collaborations happen, really. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear more. It sounds like y'all are continuing Mm -hmm. to collaborate together, which is just such an Mm -hmm. exciting thing to hear. I'd love to know where are you today with it or where where you headed with it or what can you talk about? Yeah, after... The March presentation, that was a very big push (laughs) for everybody, I think. Um, We we did take a couple, like we did take two weeks off to uh, sleep, just like sleep (laughs) on it, regroup, get in touch with friends that we've been neglecting for Saturdays, you know, and then we went through all of our pledges and contacted every single person that pledged. And most of them, we set up just a meeting like, hey, how's it going? What's up? Uh, This is what you said in your pledge. What's going on? And so like, you know, just having, putting faces and voices to the names and having them meet us. And they also might be like, you guys are weird. I don't want to work for you. And you're like, that's also cool. (laughs) Um, Right. But from there, we have found some lovely people that are just willing to, like rah, rah, you know, they cheer us on, uh, collaborate, give information, give insight, ask questions that like we didn't even think of or would, wouldn't even have the capacity to think of, you know? So that's been amazing. Um, I think I can say this. Uh, we're rewriting the entire script and, you know, after sleeping on it and then thinking about it and like taking the time off and then talking to people, like going through that whole process, you're like, It's good, but I think if we're gearing this towards kids, we want it a little bit more like this. So River is the same goofy, wonderful, excitable little character and the adventure, the outcome is the same, but the story and how you process that is going to be a little bit different for the audience, um, which we all seem very happy about and we're still rewriting that script and getting all of that so it's continuing it'll be a little bit different than the presentation in march but that is expected yeah that's fantastic so we saw like a 90 second little glimpse of basically river in the window introducing themselves Mm -hmm. and my understanding of it and i could be totally wrong was that it is a live AR mm-hmm. experience with a child. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. that one-on-one live interaction, which is so cool. How do you see that currently and where you're kind of taking it? Are you basically codifying this kind of river character that has to be rehearsed with a dozen actors that are on call to be able to play with kids as the Mayfly? Or would everybody create their own little river that could be selected from a menu of mayflies. So we already have a couple of actors that are willing to jump in, which is amazing and brilliant. And uh, it's it as of now, it's one script. Will that change? Probably. We will find out. Um, <laughs> right. It's it's a very fluid process with uh, our team, and that's kind of the the joy of working with this group of people as well, where it really, it really nothing is precious with this group, which is what makes 
it's so much fun. Cool. Yeah. And in the current iteration of it, what would I need to be a performer in mm -hmm. the Mayfly universe? And what would I need to be an audience member? Um, as of now, we envision the audience member having access to a cell phone, or I believe some apps can also be done on like an iPad or tablet. Cool. And as a performer, exactly what you saw on the vertical slice is a computer or a tablet where you can like click the um, actions or triggers of the Mayfly and headphones or a uh, microphone to speak into. So we're going to try keeping that. We'll probably tidy it up, make it more complicated. You know, all those fun things that come into expanding a piece out. But as of now, that's what very cool we're hoping for so that it can be done with minimal resources also because there's no funding. So <laughs> if everybody has a computer and headphones or a microphone, Great. Well, that that's a great segue into the kind of big question of why we're doing these check-ins is what mm -hmm. are you missing? Obviously, everyone would love for money to fall out of the sky, but are there specific things that are holding your team back from that next stage or step? Yeah, we need access to a mocap studio. Cool. We need to get the um, movements of River... Um, into a system so Manny, our animator, is not there animating every single little itty bitty move because we right. want Manny to still like us by the end of this process. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I think that's the biggest thing that we're up against right now because even like small, well, A, some mocap studios are booked through 2022. Right. Some places that uh, we have connections to are like, there's no way you're getting in before 2022, which is not ideal because we want a beta of this by um, December, January. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Yeah. That's also fluid. That's also fluid. Right. Um, no, I have, all deadlines are meant to be pushed. <laughs> that's the goal. Um. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's the biggest thing is like finding connections in the mocap world yeah, there's just no funding, but that like, if we were to have funding, that is exactly where it would go that we've spoken to enough mocap studios that we have like a ballpark of approximately how much we would need to ask for. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. And then the other question, because our team is, uh, our producer Fraser LaRocque is based in Canada. And then the rest of us are here in the USA. Um, how do you even fundraise and then pay people when the company or the the group, the project is international? So there's like a lot, there's like businessy things that we right. have brought up and then we're like, you just put that to the side, sweep it under the rug and stop thinking about it. Um, <laughs> we'll have to think about it one day <laughs> to be completely honest. So if you are listening and you have a mocap company or you are a lawyer that deals with corporate structure internationally, that would be very helpful uh, to get in touch with the Mayfly team. I'd love to know, it's so interesting to spend, especially this time, working, writing about kind of death and legacy and lifespan. Where are you at right now of what you want your own legacy to be? Mm. My own legacy. Well, it would be amazing to only have to work in this field um, of creating wild and wonderful things. It would be, I hope nobody's listening, it would be amazing to quit my job at a gym um, <laughs> and only work in that creative field. Um, that's the ultimate goal. I hope that's the legacy. I think the one thing that I keep repeating over and over again, and maybe this is just me trying to convince people to hire me, is that um, performers with experience are so valuable to a team. I think I've done close to a thousand shows at Sleep No More, 200 shows of Then She Fell, hundreds of shows of Chained. And so being that 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 first 
person to interact with audience, to learn what they like, to learn the boundaries, to learn when to offer hands, when to touch, even in VR, just the amount of hours all of those, all of us have spent interacting with um, players or guests or audience members, whatever you choose to call them, that information is really important. And I also know that I can like, as a performer, I can look at a script and say, oh, we can just cut this line because this is what we can do with the audience member instead. But only a performer knows that because they're the ones that have done it over and over and over again. So I hope that the legacy I do live behind is A, I want to keep working in this field, but B, um, that performers are crucial to the creative process. That's beautifully put. Um, how do you communicate and convert that value in the space right now? Are there ways that you have found that you start talking about it and eyes glaze over and there's other ways that you start talking about it and you go, oh, they're leaning yeah. in, they're getting it. Um, the, uh, there, there's a thing where you do something and the director says, yes, like that. Um, but what some people don't realize is that takes a lot of skill and training. Yes. What we do in like as second nature. Yeah. So yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I think having a, I don't, I don't know what, I don't even know what the title would be like some type of performer, director, liaison, consultant is, is in fact important to keep both performers happy and safe audience happy and safe and continually mystified because it's really easy to take an audience member out of the piece, right? It's called the clunky transition. And then all of a sudden they're out, right? If returning to learning the light board at Juilliard, yeah. what would you want to take today if you were going back to talk to young you in that kind of a setting that it's like you're getting this incredible training, this incredible control of your instrument. That's fantastic and totally valuable. Here's this other little gift that I just want to leave with you because I think that in the grand scheme of bringing that craft into the industry, this is that bridge. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think the, the, the thing that I would tell my little self at school still is – to see other shows, not dance. I spent a lot of time. I I was I'm a very good show watcher. I'm obsessed with seeing pieces. And when we're not in COVID lockdowns, right. I try to see at least one live show a week, um, whether it be theater, dance, music, a gallery. Um, but that's just like my happy place is going out. And I think I would have told myself as a student see other things other than the shows that you're like ushering at school, you know? Cause I saw a lot of opera and theater cause those were happening at school and you were like paid to see them cause you were an usher. So it was awesome. Um, but like, I never went to go see a play in Lincoln center. I never, other than the operas that were required of us to see during our music classes, I never went to the Met to go see opera. I've danced more operas on that stage than I have witnessed operas in the audience. Wow. Yeah. So I think like, just see it all. Cool. Just see it all. Yeah. To fulfill that internal desire for you. Cause I'm the same way and that I need to see something every week. Like I just, I need to be inundated with art at all times. Where have you gone during the lockdown? What has become a source of accessing kind of what's out there or what's possible? Where do you go to get, inspired and to see new work? Uh, I saw Portaleza by the La Jolla Playhouse for their Without Walls Festival by David Reynoso's company, Optica Moderna, which was amazing. And I and, like was very moved to tears by it. Phenomenal. Um, I also... There was a choreographer here in LA doing a piece called Ocean 12 down on Santa Monica Beach, which was like guerrilla style dance where, you know, like in when you went to go make the donation for your ticket, um, 
there was a disclaimer like if you see the cops grab your stuff and run um (laughs) and that was amazing and just like having that there when you're like buying your ticket you're like ooh, this is fun um so some outdoor dance uh lots of live streamed music concerts my partner is a musician and so um he played a couple of outdoor concerts for like very small private parties. And so going to see those were kind of life changing. And then the one thing that I never really did when life was pre March, 2020 in the was before times in the before times, like I never really hiked. I never really went outdoor rock climbing. I never really went like adventuring locally because all of our time was spent working and then commuting to the various locations that I worked and then seeing shows. But like, I never had the downtime to ride my bike down to the beach for fun, you know? So like that as well, even though it's not performance has been important to keep my soul alive. Do you think you'll be working to preserve that as you go back into kind of the new normal? I like to say that now, but <laughs> right, I mean, talk to me in six months. I don't know. Um, I mean, Fair. yes, I'm sure it, yes, I'm sure I will keep it in some way, shape or form. But to be honest with you at this point in time, if somebody is like, there's an immersive show in this area, then I was like, screw the bike ride. I'm going to go see my friends perform, right. you know, like right. I, <laughs> So where can people get in touch with you, Haley, and where can they get in touch more formally and officially with the Mayfly team if they want to work with one, both, either? Yeah, so you can get a hold of me through my website, HaleyNichelle.com, and you can reach us at Mayfly.live. That is our website, and we have an email that you can reach us at through there as well. Haley, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. It's delightful to hear about how much y'all have done in a few months, which is just extraordinary. Like I cannot imagine you you began this saying like, well, I, I wanted to apply to the Fifth Wall Forum because I wanted to be seen as more than an actor. And now you're like a creative director of an entire experience, writing the script and producing it. It's amazing yeah. to see that journey and to hear about it. It's, it's really cool. And I think like, even if we're hoping Mayfly gets off the ground and we have some showings, but like, I know that next time I'm at home visiting my parents, like I'm going to go to Fraser's house and say hi to him. I know that like if Manny or I end up in the same city here in California, like we will meet up for coffee. So, and like, you know, same for Chris and same with Kevin. Like I know like we are more than just a functioning team that like makes pieces together I think some really incredible friendships have also developed out of this and it's very very special what you guys have created thank you well we co-created it together because it's all about that community to me the biggest part of fifth wall forum and just the xr community in general has been feeling less siloed and isolated and being able to really play in the same sandbox together and come up with stuff you never would have imagined you'd be doing six months ago, which is so cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for being on the conversation. Thank you for having me. Well, that wraps up today's conversation. Thank you so much to Haley Nichelle and the entire Team Sutherland team for staying in touch. We're so excited to see where Mayfly and the Fifth Wall Forum end up next. And you can follow along at fifthwallforum.com. I'm Brendan Bradley wishing you a happy Friday. See you next time.